Mr. Piggy Bank is now employed at an accounting firm. And he's already got himself into a crisis. See, Mr. Bank must construct a balance sheet, but does not understand the accounting principles, particularly the historical cost principle. So, let's give him a hand. The cost principle is a crucial aspect of the generally accepted accounting principles. So when recording the financial position, the cost principle states that assets must be recorded as the cash amount, or the cash amounts equivalent, at the time of acquisition, hence the name historical cost principle. Bearing this in mind, let's help Mr Piggy Bank with his first task. The Farmers & Co business purchased land for growing crops at the amount of $50,000. Six years later, with a booming real estate market, the market value has increased to $75,000. So how should Mr Piggy Bank record this transaction on the balance sheet? See, although the market price of the land has significantly increased, the amount recorded on the balance sheet and other accounting records would remain unchanged at the cost of $50,000. Here are some advantages of the cost principle. Using a valuation basis other than the historical cost could potentially cause issues for companies. So for example, if we utilise the current market value rather than the historical cost, each member of an accounting department could suggest a different value for every asset. Also, the current market value is inappropriate for entities that prepare their financial statements more than once a year. This can be seen when computing net income or preparing balance sheets on a monthly basis, as we would then have to establish a new sales value for the assets at the end of every month, thus being highly inconvenient. Clearly, the cost principle entails a few issues. So as we record the cost at the time the asset was acquired, the current market value may be substantially different. If the company were to sell their assets, the sale price may bear only the slightest relationship to those amounts reported on the balance sheet. Therefore, the historical cost principle yields potentially irrelevant results. These results may blur the company's financial position. As a result of such a large issue, it is probably the most questionable accounting principle. To be fair, when applying the cost principle to short-term assets and liabilities, the results are most likely to be accurate and justifiable. This is because the entity would not have had the possessions long enough for the values to alter dramatically prior to either liquidation or settlement. The accounting principle is also not applicable to financial investments. In these cases, Mr Piggy Bank will have to adjust the recorded amounts of such investments to their fair values when it is the end of each reporting period.